Price and the Jim Price Show daily update. I do appreciate you guys all tuning in. I uh, wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys today a little bit about what's uh, been going on in the world around us. Kyle Rittenhouse uh, case has been going along. It looks like it's been a, uh, a regular uh, misinformation, uh, almost a doxing effect where we're seeing that they're trying to create things that aren't real and actually let the judge make the decision to go ahead and default the uh, trial so that way the left or those who want to oppose gun rights or those freedoms that we all should be enjoying no matter what level of uh, the society thinks that you're at, whether that means that you are a criminal or not. I think that the uh, Second Amendment says that, uh, you sh that there should be a well-regulated militia or people's army, that regulation is not meaning that uh, you go in and you put your thumb down on to control it. It actually means that you should be regularly getting together and practicing being a people's army, that we should be ready to fight back against tyranny and those things that we're actually facing in our daily lives. And also it says thou shalt not touch you know, the Second Amendment, meaning that, that our gun rights are God-given, inherent, that don't touch the fringe, don't touch the edge. But anyway, uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, the uh, episodes that we're seeing, the play out, the drama, the BS that we're seeing, we can see that the entire criminal justice system is actually built for failure. No matter what it is that you do, no matter how much money you throw at it, they will never, ever give you justice that you deserve because you are guilty until somehow you can figure out how to pay your way or get a good deal with the judge in the back chambers. I don't understand it. I don't know why we do this. I don't know why we put up with it. We should not be allowed to treat each other this way. We have 70 to 80 percent of the people that are in our prisons right now that are actually non-victim crimes. In other words, it was an ordinance or a law or a guideline that was broken, which should not, never, ever, ever put something, somebody in jail. Now, uh, those kind of things being said, I am actually at an event right now. I'm actually in San Antonio, Texas, I'm away from my studio. I'm here doing a show because uh, we are at the Clay Clark Reawakening Tour. And we have lots of headliners here, people like General Flynn, people like Seth Ketchell, other people like that that are actually here doing things, talking about freedoms, talking about liberties, talking about how we should be taking our country back. And we should be thinking of those things on a daily basis because freedom is not free. There's nothing on this earth that is free. And if you're not willing to fight for freedom, then don't complain about it when they take it away from you. The world around us right now is in a very, 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 uh, what do you want to call it, um, uh, disarray because we have yet to bother to stand up for our freedoms, to stand up for our liberties. We're letting them mass children. We're now letting them put the jab into kids that are down to, what, five years of age? This is the kind of gene therapy crap that we cannot be putting up with anymore. We found out that polio actually uh, is more uh, prevalent in our society because of the polo vaccine, not because of natural spread. These are the things that we need to learn and understand in our daily lives that we know that we have to push back on. We cannot continue to, to put up with this any longer. This is the world that we live in, and we are the ones in control. As soon as we stand up and push back against this tyranny, we will be able to no longer have to fear them or have to look to them. Don't subjugate yourself to these people. Don't give in. Don't give them power. Don't give over power to people who not deserve it. You understand that your elected officials your elected officials have less rights than you do. They are your servants. They are there to do your bidding. If you read your state's constitution, look at the Bill of Rights of each of your states. It says all political power is inherent in the people, not in the elected officials, not in the money, money grubbing, you know, corporate entities. No, the all, poli all political power is inherent in the people. We are the people. All free governments are based on their authority. Who is their authority? That's us, our authority. We give them the authority, we give them those things, then we should be able to con control those things or manipulate those things or change those things. In fact, in your Bill of Rights, it says you are allowed to change out your government whenever you feel necessary for any given reason. It doesn't matter. You don't have to wait for four years. You don't have to wait for two years. You don't have to wait for the midterms. You don't have to wait for another election. You don't hire an employee and wait four years to fire them if they suck then why is it that we're allowing our servants to go around and suck money off of us, money launder for their families, money launder for their people, whatever it is they're wanting to do, their little agenda, when we know this is happening, then we should be pulling them out immediately. But we're not. And we're subjugating. We're giving our, our powers and our freedoms over people who do not deserve those authorities. We don't have to live in this world. We can be the people we want to be and live how we want to live. 
liberty, the freedom of the mind, freedom, freedom of the body. Why aren't we practicing these more? Individual freedoms, individual liberties. These are the real basis of what this country was based off of. For 180 years, we did not have federal laws. 180 years, we didn't have state laws. But somehow we got away from the idea that the Constitution was enough, that we need to start telling people how to live their lives. We're trying to legislate morality, the right and wrongs. But you know what? That's in inside inherent in each one of us, and we have to live those lives. We have to be self-reliant. When you give that power over to the government, they're going to abuse it. And they've shown that. They've shown it to us over and over again, how they're willing to abuse us, how they're willing to misuse us. And at this point, this whole thing with the, uh, the different things they're trying to do to us with the mandates things, this is actually trying to kill us. Do you guys understand that the six foot, well, let, me, let, me, let me slow this down for a second. The six foot social distancing rule, guideline, mandate, by the way, there's no such thing as a mandate. Mandates don't have laws, or not laws, because there's no penalty tied to it, right? Do you understand that six foot, six foot makes you actually mistrust a person, even if you know them? To have a conversation more than six feet away means that you mistrust that person, you're suspicious of that person. And they do that to separate us, to keep us from talking, so that we won't understand what's really going on in the world around us, and this is what we're fighting. The world around us is actually ours. We don't have to give over to these people any power. We can be who we want to be and how we want to be. We don't have to ask permission to have freedom of the mind. We don't have to ask permission to f move our bodies freely. No, we do as we wish. We are the people. All political power is inherent in the people. And I want to ask you a question. Let me ask you this real quick. How many of you, honestly, honestly, have ever read the Bill of Rights for your state? How many of you have actually taken the time to look up your state, California Constitution, look at the Bill of Rights, what does it say? How many of us have actually taken the time, Wisconsin, Florida, Kansas, New York, to actually see where it says that we, the people, have all the political power? Why are we giving over to these people? Why are we giving to these people? Because we've been trained well. We're good sheep. We're good sheeple. We're the chattel. We're the cattle that's being led around by our little nose rings and being told what to do and how to live. We don't have to live this. We have put up enough of our own adversary, our own uh, fictitious walls, our own fictitious jails, our own fictitious cages that don't exist. Why are we doing that? Because we've been told to, we've been trained to. This is what we have to push back on. We cannot be these people any longer. We are better than all this. We really are. And the thing is, guys, listen, if you think that freedom is such a horrible thing, then why do you think it's something you need? If everybody talks about freedom, then then why aren't you like, hey, quit talking about freedom. We need more cages. We need more restriction. Why do you feel like you want to use the word freedom all the time? Because that's what God gave you in your heart. God gave you in your heart that, that desire for freedom, the desire to be a free man, to walk freely, to think freely. Liberty and freedom are the basis of everything that makes you breathe. Guys, this is the world we live in, and why aren't we trying to make this world a better place? Why aren't we trying to be better than we were the day before? Why aren't we trying to make the world something that is amazing for all? You guys want equality? Then fight for freedom. You guys want to understand a better world? Then fight for freedom. You guys want to have less poverty? Fight for freedom. You guys want to have less wars? Fight for freedom. And that means you take back the power that you've given over to these people. You don't have to do this. You don't have to put up with it. The world is yours to take and do as you want. I don't understand why we've done this. If I told you to go and do something just because I told you to do it, would you do it? I mean, you don't even know me from Adam. You don't know me from who I am. You're not hanging out with me, and you're not my children. I mean, even as children, they push back on us, and they want their freedoms and their liberties, right? They want to think freely. They want their body to move freely. But then we're telling them as parents are trying to get them to do the right thing, right? But they still, as in, inherent in a child is freedom. Inherent in a child is liberty. And yet as adults, we forget that because, oh, we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to get in trouble. We, oh, maybe the police are going to know. You know, if the police are holding you back from your liberties, if the police are holding you back from your freedoms, then shame on them. If your marshals, if your sheriffs are holding you back from liberties and freedoms, then shame on them. You should educate them on what liberties and freedoms really mean. They understand what their oath of office, their oath to the Constitution really stands for. They need to be better people. See, if they want freedoms themselves, then they need to give you freedoms as well. 
and it's a, that's the thing. Yeah, if you want to put 12 holes in your face and walk around with purple and pink hair and do whatever it is, you, I, that's fine. You do you, but don't expect me to pick up the pieces when you can't get a job. Don't expect me to, to pay for your welfare because or your schooling because you want to change a career. No. You go out and do what you need to do. I talk about individual freedoms and liberties because I want you to go out and be amazing on your own steam. I want you to succeed and fail on your own merit. I don't need to pick up your pieces. There doesn't need to be a government for there for you. You need to do your thing. Be you. Be that amazing person you can be. And imagine if you allowed yourself, if you allowed yourself to take the time to figure out who you really are and what lane you should be in and quit trying to be the red Ferrari you're not. That's the problem is we got everybody's like, oh, I get, I can be there, I get to be what. No, the problem with that is, is that the reality is God's given us all skills and they've given us all tools to be amazing, amazing people. But not everybody is going to be a saxophone player. Not everybody is going to fly a plane. Oh, yeah, I want to learn to fly a plane. I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, that's fine. But maybe your, your super cool skill set is something different than that. And God has that plan for you. God has a, a plan for your, your gift to be amazing for the world around you. But if you're denying that, then you're denying God's plan and it'll never work. And I get it that if you're, the wind is not at your face, then you're not moving forward. I understand the challenges of the world that's around us. I get that. I understand that the world's a hard place. I, I lived it, guys. I've had the no-knock warrants on my house. What makes you so special that because I got a hangnail, I can't go to work, I can't live, I can't move forward. Guys, I have been through the sausage machine of the establishment, watched them chewed up my life, taking away my ability to make money, taking away my reputation, taking away my fortune, but yet I'm still here trying to do the right thing, make sure that the people out there understand what their liberties and freedoms are about. And oh, well, my hangnail, I can't go to work today, I can't be who I need to be, I can't discipline my children, I can't raise my children the way they should go. What? These sounds like very, very, very lazy excuses. I mean, I understand laziness is in all of us. Sinfulness is in all of us. I get that. But do we have to be lazy? Do we have to be that person that doesn't do the right thing? No. Fight back against the evils that are already inside of you and be a better person every day. Think about if we were all doing that 10% I talk about quite often, the 10% that we do, that little bit of extra for each other every day, your neighbor, community, your city, your county, state, the federal government, the more you do for them, the less they have to do for you. So think if you're doing more for everybody else, then God gets to fill up your blessing cup and do amazing things for you. Now, will that blessing cup look like the way you want to look like? No, because it's God's version. It will be what God wants and knows that God has those abilities to give you that it's amazing that God has this ability to give you things that are so amazing that it's so cool. No, no, I wanted the red Ferrari. No. Well, I want to be a red Ferrari. No. No, that's not God's plan. I mean, a lot of the things that I was doing, I had a high security, I was doing high security design build for the DOD. I had above top secret security clearance and all that was taken away from me because I ran for office. They took my reputation, they took my ability to make money, but you know what, I, but when I let God take control and I live by faith, I have been able to do things that I had never ever thought were possible. I've been able to travel and do things I never ever thought were possible before, even when I was making a lot of money. Even when I was doing really great things, I was doing all this really cool contracting. I was a, a private contract for the DOD for 17 years. 17 years of doing some of the most amazing high security projects. Blast proofing, bullet proofing, shelter in place, ground penetrating radar, all this cool stuff. I was doing all these things. It was really, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm good at it. But you know, here's the problem with that. That's not what God needed me for. God didn't need me in that position. God needed me to be able to talk about you being a better person than you were every single day. God was out there making it saying, you know what, you, here's, here's these doors open through. Talk to people about who you are and what you are. Talk to people about they can be better than who they are every single day. Talk to people about making sure that they're looking out for others before they look out for themselves. Being selfless, not selfish. I believe that all sin is based in selfishness. Absolutely every single sin starts in selfishness when you start thinking inwardly. And also, I've talked to clinical scientists, I, I, psychologists, I've talked to scientists, I've talked to them about depression, and I have asked them, where does depression come from? Does this come from selfishness? And they, every one of them goes immediately, their answer out of their mouth is yes. Yes. When people look internally, when people start thinking of themselves first, when they start doing their own thing, 
they start to tear themselves down and they start to cycle and they become less and less positive. The negativity tears them apart, tears the world apart. Instead of doing for others and seeing the benefit of that and then seeing the blessings that God can give them, they look inside, they go out there trying to receive and get their own blessings. When you're trying to get your own blessings, then God can't bless you, right? So think about how simple that is. Living by faith sounds terrible. It sounds like it's a horrific thing to do. Like, oh my gosh, how could I live by faith? But every single day I live by faith because that's all I had left after they tore me apart with the machine. The machine tore me apart, ate me up. I said, you know what? What do I have left? I don't have my money. I don't have my job. I don't have my reputation. I don't have my social groups. Well, so what's left? Faith. God. God opens the doors and I simply walk through them because he gets to make those decisions for me. He's making decisions for me and I get to walk through those doors. How amazing is that? And do I get attacked? Yeah. Do I get called things? Yeah. But you know what? As long as I'm doing his will, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm okay with that. And you should be as well. And it does take practice. Faith is not something that comes naturally, right? But the world around us is an evil, evil thing. Look what they're doing to Kyle Rittenhouse, a guy who was actually defending himself and trying to help protect his, a neighborhood. Why does it matter whether he lived in that neighborhood or he didn't live in that neighborhood? Well, it's because, well, you know, uh, shiny object crap, right? No. Let's not think of that. Let's not think about the shiny object. Let's think about the fact that he was doing something selflessly. Well, no, he was out there trying to get his glory. No, he wasn't. You know, this is the problem is that we have these people out there using their selfish point of view to try to define other people's selfless acts. And that's why it never, ever holds water because they're just making up stuff to try to tear people down. What a horrible life that is to have to live your life tearing others down what would it be if we were all building each other up, if we were all doing more for each other? What would this world be? It would be amazing, right? We'd all be doing more. We would be getting rid of crime. We would be getting rid of, of homelessness. We would be getting rid of the broken family. We'd be putting God back in the homes. We'd be putting fathers back in the home. We would be bringing back traditions in our families that would make us amazing. You know, when we stopped talking about politics and we stopped talking about religion in our kitchen tables, it destroyed our family homes. But we got to look at the facts of things. Where do these things come from? Where did the American Medical Association come from? It came from Rockefellers. Rockefellers were Standard Oil. Standard Oil wanted to be, when they found out they could make medications out of oil, well, then, hey, we're going to make more money. We're going to make money on selling oil byproducts. Why, why, was, um, why was Standard Oil uh, sponsoring Molly Hatchet? Why, when she went around and was busting open these whiskey barrels and these beer barrels, what, why was she doing that? Because well, she was sponsored by Standard Oil. Because Standard Oil didn't want you making ethanol or alcohol at your home. Ford made BioFlex vehicles. You could run your, your Ford off of a uh, petroleum or an alcohol-based fuel. It didn't matter. You could just pour both of them in there and it would just run. It would just run. So how do you get people from making home steel uh, alcohol? How do you get them from making their home steel ethanol? By going in and saying, by the way, all alcohol, all home steels are illegal, and you created the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. So you create this agency that says, oh, well, there's no home steel, so now you've got to buy petroleum-based fuel only. Money and greed, control of others. Why is it a thing? But Tesla had an amazing, amazing... Um, a system of electrifying all homes by using the static from the earth and being able to distribute that static evenly throughout our devices and our homes and be able to make our homes more livable but yet his finances were cut off because he said I can't charge people for something that's in the air that's all around us that's a part of us see again that's that money and greed thing that's where we we got to look at why do things happen this way why do we see selfishness why do we see foreign aid coming out and but yet then those that write the bill for foreign aid become one of the richest in congress because it's a money laundering scheme because it's going on right in front of us and they're not they're, they're, they're not afraid to lie to us they're willing to do this every single day the world around us shows us the evil and we're too too uh, busy what playing candy crush to see that the evil's there that it's actually real Shame on us. We have to be more diligent. We have to fight for our freedoms. We have to fight for our liberties. And we have to fight for the truth. The JimPriceShow.com is where you can find me and you can find a lot of different things. You can find the different social links out there and you can get a hold of me. But the problem is, is that you guys don't seem to want to even do that. You don't want to sp spend the time to even disprove anything I've just said. You don't want to even spend the time to say, well, you know, he's wrong. You just want to turn the channel. No, don't turn the channel. Don't change things. Don't look the other direction. The world needs you to get in the fight. 
And the thing is, is actually when you start actually fighting for others, you actually find out that you end up you're on a better path. You become selfless and not selfish. And that means that you're going to be on the right side of the ball no matter what it is. The world will always be better if you're being selfless. But you know what? There's a lot of people out there that are famous. There's a lot of people out there doing things, and then they end up finding themselves on the wrong side of the ball because they got greedy. Because they started thinking about the money first. They started thinking about them first. They started thinking about their comfort first. And they started thinking about what they can do for them. And again, you're not going to be blessed by God when you're doing things that are selfish and not selfless. The world needs you to be in that fight. The world needs you to be a better person. Imagine that. Imagine that. You need to be a better person. We all do. Every day I'm working to be a better person. Every day I'm trying to be a better person. So what are you doing for that? Are you writing down in a, on a piece of paper? I, I challenge you right now. I'm going to challenge you right now. I want you to write down on a piece of paper something that you want to do in life. You know, I want a new home. I want a home that has four bedrooms, two baths, on an acres of land. And I want you to write that down, and I want you to write that down, and I want you to keep writing that, and I want you to write that statement, and I want you to write about that statement for 10 minutes, and then I want you to take that piece of paper and throw it in the trash. And then tomorrow I want you to do it thing again. Now, you can throw that piece of paper in the trash, or you can keep that piece of paper. But every day, writing about the home you want, writing about the business you want, writing about the truck you want, writing about the car you want, every day for 10 minutes. That's it. Ten minutes talking about what I mean. It is, this is what you want, right? You want a new home. You want a new job. You want a you want a new house. You, you or not a house, but a new truck. You want a new car. You want an airplane. Then write down for ten minutes every day about that airplane. Write for ten minutes about that truck. What you would do in that truck? You go fishing. You go out in the woods. You go camping more. You'd be pull, you'd be moving people's stuff. You'd be hauling tra you know, you know, haul a trailer. You'd have. You know, you'd put pinstripes on it, you'd make it, you know, you'd polish it every day. Whatever it is, you'd write that down for 10 minutes every single day doing that. That's what you need to do. That's the world you need to live in. Hey, and there's Alex Jones right there. So, anyway, guys, the world around us is a place that is meant for you to be in action. It's meant for you to do the right thing. That's the world you need to think of. That's what we need to be a part of. This is the kind of stuff that I do not understand why it is that this doesn't come natural to us. Because I guess they've dumbed us down enough. Common core math. Oh, we're going to guesstimate what math is. Math was the only constant no matter where you're at, no matter what language you're a part of. Oh, wait, but it is or it isn't? Which one is it? Is math constant? Then why is common core math allow you to estimate? Why is common core math allow you to do these variables and things that don't make sense? This is the world we're living in, guys. You take control of it. You educate your children. You educate your families. You educate your neighbors to the truth. That's the difference. That's what we need to be thinking about. Don't be those guys that are pushed around. Don't be those guys that are this. oh, the, uh, uh, uh. no, don't do that. The world needs you to be an amazing, amazing person. And that cause, that's, that's cause for effort, right? You have to put the effort in every single day. And that's what this is. Guys, I'm at an event right now. I travel to an event. And I've been able to be here and meet some amazing people to talk about freedoms and talking about their struggles and talking about doctors being fired out of, out of emergency rooms. I, I, I've met with people that nurses who have been, who had to turn the resignation in because they didn't want to take the, the, the little in the arm. These people are out there on the front line doing their best to stand up for you. But what are you doing in for your own life? What are you doing for your own children? What are you doing for your own parents? What are you doing for your own community? See, this is the difference, guys. This is why I'm at these events, because I get recharged at these events. I get to do amazing things at the event, meet amazing people, do great interviews. But what are you doing? What simply are you doing? Are you keeping your mouth shut about the truths you know? Are you keeping your mouth shut about the tyranny? Are you keeping your mouth shut about the misuse of your fellow man? Come on, folks. Don't be that. Don't be those people. Be better than who you were every... Be better than who you were yesterday. I mean, I'm, I'm going to screw that up one more time. Be better today than you were yesterday every single day. Just a little bit. A little bit. Be a better man. Be a better man. Be a better man. You can be that man. You can be that woman. There is only man and woman, by the way. I'm not going to go down that road of this gender. Blah, blah, blah. That's why we don't have... When you take the fathers out of home, you take gods out of home, that's where you come up with this gender crap, right? This, this uh, fluidity that doesn't make any sense, right? I get to be in a attack helicopter today because I want to be. And you got to respect my authority. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And we don't have to be those people that fall into those traps. If you have your own morality, if you have your own understanding of what is right and wrong, a lot of this stuff will come naturally to you and you'll be able to be that person every single day. 
And yes, you'll have trials and you'll have those that test your metal and test whether you're sharp enough, test whether you're smart enough, test whether you're strong, that you have the energy every single day. Yes, they're going to test you. But as long as they're testing you, you know you're doing the right thing. If there's nobody pushing back on your ideas, maybe you need to start practicing a little harder. Maybe you need to sharpen your skills. Maybe you need to be pushing harder for the truth because maybe you're not close enough to it. So this is your job every day. This is what you need to do every day. Be the better person, right? Be that better person every day. I keep saying that over and over again because I think it's important that we all understand that. Now, um, I have had some great interviews, though I've been here this week. It's been awesome to be a part of this. I've been very, very grateful to be here. Uh, you can go to thegympriceshow.com and see some of those interviews, be a part of those things. Well, there's some neat stuff on there. And I've actually been interviewed more at this event than I've given interviews. So things are going in the right direction. Things are going out there. People want to hear about the truth. They want to hear about liberties. They want to hear about their freedoms, that we stand with all patriots. We stand with all patriots. It's not a Republican thing or Democrat thing or libertarian or independent. I said we stand with all patriots. Patriots believe in God and country first. They don't care what's between your legs, what color your skin is, or what you do in your bedroom. That's how they divide us. That's the divisiveness they use, that the, the what's between your legs, what color your skin is, or what you do in your bedroom. You notice that that's really the common theme of all these things. You don't have to fall into those traps. Don't be those people that give into those things. Don't be those people that give into those evils. We need to be the right people at the right time. And this is your time. I think we're in a real revolution of things, a real revolution of ideas. The citizen journalists that are really out there doing the right thing, that are giving you the right information, not the fluff stories, not the propaganda, not all this uh, BS, you know, the, the red flag events. Guys, we've been proving and debunking all of their red flag events over and over again. We're seeing the paid actors. I saw the paid actors of January 6th when I was there. I saw what they were willing to do and the lies they were willing to give us. Don't put up with that anymore. Don't be the people that get sucked into those things. I got people rushing by the camera here, so it may have been jiggling a little bit, but I do apologize for that. And there is the background noise. So there's a lot of things going on. And there's a lot of neat people here who really have your best interests at heart. They're trying to save this country. They're trying to save your freedoms. They're trying to keep tyranny from taking over. But are you going to be willing to be the man or the woman to stand up to that and be a part of this? Be a better person. Make the world a better place. Freedoms and liberties have always been the answer. Go and read. I want you, I challenge you right now to go read your Bill of Rights for your individual state. Go read it. And you're going to find that all political power is inherent in the people. You're going to say all free governments are founded on their authority. Find it in there. Read what it says about your ability to own a gun. It doesn't say whether you're a felon or not. It doesn't say whether you've been a bad person or not. It doesn't say whether you have a, 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 a jaywalking ticket or not. It says that you have the right to bear arms. I mean, you guys got to look this up and be better people for that. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you guys all being here. I'm Jim Price. This is the Jim Price Show Daily Update. Look me up on thejimpriceshow.com, and uh, I appreciate everything you guys are doing out there. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.